What happened during last 150 years that the shirt changed from the underwear into the proper wear? About all of this I will be speaking in today's video. My name is Katarzyna Andres and this is English translation of my podcast Men's Site of Fashion. Uh, today's video is the third one in the series of uh, men's shirts and under underwear. So if you want to hear more about uh, how did a shirt, a men's shirt change during uh, last several centuries and what was the purpose of the underwear, um, I invite you to subscribe my channel and uh, see my other videos. Before sewing machine came into general use, which happened in mid 19th century, shirts were made as uh, other garments. They were just sewn by hand. They were hidden under the other layers, so tailors not so easily, but anyway, after some time, accepted that this part of garment can be made by machinists. In general, tailors and haute couture houses were reluctant to use sewing machines for other works. Even today, making tailored suit requires a lot of hand sewing. And I know this because for some time I make such clothes to order, especially historical coats and suits. Shirts could more often than other garments be made by women in their houses just because they were relatively simple to make. From the same reason, the instructions of shirt making were included in women magazines. Of course, not all women had time and skills to use that instructions. Generally, improvement of industry caused lowering prices of fabrics. Seamstresses, tailors and all other people in uh, clothing production taught themselves how to use machines properly. And at that time even the new profession appeared, the machinist. All that caused that shirts and other undergarments in general could be created cheaper and sold at lower prices. Some families made the decision that if shirt is no longer an expensive item, it should be bought rather than soon. They were aware that shirts really could make the work and give the men a respectable appearance. In the second half of 19th century, more and more attention was paid to the sport. It was no longer only horse riding and shooting or hunting what was acceptable. There were also tennis, swimming as recreation style and in Great Britain and America, croquet. This was the reason for sportswear to become more visible and important. For some sports, men were not even wearing waistcoats. The sporting outfit were surely evolving and sometimes sport uniform consisted only of the trousers and shirt. For example, we can give early 20th uh, century outfit for tennis. This caused that people become more familiar with the view of men in just a shirt and without anything on it. The bathing and swimming suits were also very popular in the second half of 19th century, and before the outbreak of First World War, they were less built up than when they first appeared. Of course, it was not so easy in case of women, but men's swimming suits were not so much covering uh, even in the mid 19th century. In the end of 19th century, those suits consisted of something like short sleeved t shirt and trousers reaching only the knee area. After the Great War, it was even less. The shirt had no sleeves and the short trousers reached only the tight. If it was just like I described, if men were wearing something with short or no sleeves at all and very short trousers and in that outfit they were not something shocking or even surprising, why should a shirt be unacceptable? If it was long sleeved, well cut and fitted and with proper collar, it surely looked better than swimming suit. Of course, that bathing costumes were not usually met on the streets. But just to be clear, to make such clothes welcome after British 19th century, somewhere there in people's minds had to occur some change in perception of clothing and fashion itself. Shirts were just underwear at the beginning. Not something elegant, not designed to be seen in full, but only in parts by other people. How did it change and how could it happen? The first cultural shock occurred during First World War. 
We can deny that war really changed what people thought. It changed the whole perception of the world and it made it possible for people to forget or just mitigate their old ways of thinking. It's not surprising. Crisis is always the matter of change and, by the way, this is something we can observe now. First of all, the clothing rules were softened. Before the war, the rules described almost every aspect of lives. Of course, it does not mean that starting from First World War everything is allowed. It means that more things are permitted and some social rules and standards are no longer valid in all areas. It affected, for example, evening clothing. One of the drives of changes during the war were soldiers. Many countries, doesn't matter on which side, sent their young people to the front. Those people were often just brutally taken out of their lives. Of course, some of them wanted to fight, but the fact is that if not the war, their lives would be completely different. They would probably use their lives and have fun. They had their hopes and dreams and this was all ruined now. After some time, people lost their hope. And this is especially true when it comes to the soldiers. They knew that in several hours or days, they could be seriously wounded or even dead. How much clothes can mean uh, when they were under such conditions? If only the clothes were available and they were quite warm, it was more than enough. How much the conventions could mean in their circumstances, even if that was the serious part of particular men's lives before the war? The war did change the perception of life. Why wouldn't it change the way of dressing as well? In the army, the most important and even sacred thing was the order of commander. It could cause that a specific man would finish the next day or battle being alive. What's more, private soldiers couldn't have any idea about the general view of the battle. They could only hope that they are not just sent to certain death. But there were some moments of peace and rest when there were no commands and some commanders allowed their soldiers to take a rest in a camp or some other safe place. Sometimes soldiers were even allowed to take off the jacket and spend time in only their shirts while taking a rest or doing some work. Men were usually using that short moments of relative freedom as it were the last one. And in fact, it could be. Those men changed by the war came back home when the war was already finished or when they were not suitable for service any longer. They were happy to be alive, but also they were alone, because they lost comrades and friends. They were no longer accustomed to be watched by women from society or some other social circles. They were not accustomed to live among civilized people. They spent months or even years in the front, in trenches, in very bad conditions. They were probably indifferent on social standards. They have changed and their ways of clothing changed as well. The Second World War was not as big shock as the first one. Many living people lived through the Great War for those 20 years earlier. They had it in mind in September 1939. However, this does not change the fact that again young people were sent to death. People with future now destroyed and with hopes and dreams which they had to give up. Of course, both wars changed the way of living and perception of lives and priorities of people who had lived. But they changed also some other things. During First and Second World War, the resources were ending faster than anyone expected. Both wars were supposed to last few months, not so many years. Everything was in luck. Food and fuel and the clothes too. Fabric stocks were running low and because most of them was sent for military use, the prices of civilian clothing were increasing. Not only fabrics, but also furs and leathers were rationed. This is the example of Second World War uh, from France. Many people had to limit their clothes or fabric shopping. They had no other choice than to use what was available in their homes. The clothes were remade and the old fabrics were used. For example, Great Britain during First World War did make the symbol of patriotism from avoiding wearing new clothes. Everything of this connected together caused that during those wars the perception of clothing and rules had changed. Clothes were no longer most important part of that rules, but they were only something accompanying. 
They were still somewhat important, but in different way. Through the decades, the formality level of some garments did increase. This means that, for example, before First World War, proper evening attire was the tailcoat. The dinner jacket was not so popular and it was used mainly for less elegant and less formal events. After the war for such evening formal events, dinner jacket was considered even more than acceptable. Now we can observe similar phenomenon. For the evening performances in operas, and I mean not premieres but normal performances, people do not wear tailcoats or even dinner jackets. If a young man is seen there wearing any jacket and woolen trousers, he's considered to be a personification of elegance. Shirts came through similar path. The shirt got the status of a proper piece of garment, but it was previously a piece of undergarments. Changes of that kind usually run slowly. They are first accepted by some classes and age groups, but uh, not so much welcomed by others. It is usual that young people welcome those changes more willing than older. Sometimes those changes are started by some lower social classes or just by people in certain social or ethnic group. Anyway, it's the fact that after Second World War, wearing not covered shirt for everyday use, for example during summer, was nothing strange. I'm quite convinced that this is not the last time I'm talking about shirts and underwear. Just let me know if you're interested in any specific topic. You can contact me just like you want. All the contacts are in the description of this video and on this last screen. This was the last part about men's underwear, at least for now. So thank you for watching and meet me on my channel and in my social media on Facebook and Instagram. I invite you especially to join my uh, social media because from time to time I'm creating the quizzes in my uh, stories so that you can check your knowledge in general about men's fashion. Muzyka użyta w tym podcaście to Overture Aleksandra Nakarada.